supporting me through this. My Lords, I'm sure your Lordships wouldn't want the bill to pass without hearing (laughs) some squeak of uh, protest and uh, dissent from those of us who have spent so many days and weeks um, uh, arguing for the interests um, of privacy and free speech, uh, to which this bill remains a very serious and major threat. But before I come to those remarks, could I just associate myself with what other noble lords have said uh, about what a privilege it has been for me personally and for many of us to participate over so many days and weeks in what I think has been the House of Lords at its most deliberative, at its deliberative best. Um, I I, I almost wrote down that we we have conducted ourselves like an academic seminar, but actually, when you think about what most academic (laughs) seminars are like, with sort of endless PowerPoint slides and people shuffling around and, and no spontaneity whatsoever, we exceeded that by far. And the discussions, the, converse, the conversational tone we had, mm. and the way in which people who didn't agree were able to engage, and indeed friendships were made, and the whole thing was done with a great deal of respect, even for those of us who were um, in the small uh, minority. At this point, I should say, perhaps on behalf of the noble Baroness Lady, Lady Fox of Buckley, uh, who participated very fully in all stages of the bill, that she deeply regrets she cannot be in her place uh, today. Um, I I am not going to single out anybody, except I will single out one person, because um, I I made the rather frivolous proposal in committee that all of our debate should begin with Lord Allen of Hallam, because uh, we learnt so much from every contribution he made uh, that he really should have kicked off all of the debates, and we'd all have been a great deal more, uh, I think, intelligent uh, about what we were saying and understood it better uh, had we heard what he had to say. But I certainly have learned a great deal uh, from him, uh, and I think it was very good. The, the, I will raise two issues only that remain outstanding and are not assuaged by the very odd remarks made by my noble friend, um, as, he, um, uh, as he moved the third reading. Uh, first, concerning encryption. Uh, the fact of the matter is, everybody knows that you cannot do what Ofcom is empowered by this bill to do without breaching end-to-end encryption. It's as simple as that. Now, my noble friend may say, that's not the government's intention. And he may say, Well, they can't be forced to do it if the technology isn't there. None of that's in the bill, by the way, but he may say that at the dispatch box. But that doesn't address the fact that end-to-end encryption will be breached if Ofcom finds a way of doing what the bill empowers it to do. So why have we empowered Ofcom to do that, and how do we envisage Ofcom is going to reconcile those circumstances where platforms say that they have uh, given their best endeavours to doing something, and Ofcom simply doesn't believe they have. Of course it might end up in the courts, but the crucial point is that that decision, which affects so many people, and where pri- which so many people nowadays regard as a right, a right to privacy in their own communications, that decision, which might be made by Ofcom and might be made by the courts, will not be made in this Parliament. We have given it away to an, to an unaccountable process, and the democracy has been taken out of it, and that is, in my view, a great shame. And then I come back to another issue, my second, and I won't be very long, my second issue, which was I constantly ask about Wikipedia. Is Wikipedia in scope of the bill? If it is, is it going to have to do prior checking of what is posted on Wikipedia because that would destroy its business model and it would make many minority languages, I instanced Welsh, many minority language sites totally unviable. My noble friend said at the dispatch box that in his opinion Wikipedia was not going to be in scope of the bill. But when I said, why can't we then put that in the bill, he said, oh, it's not for me to decide whether Wikipedia is in scope for the bill. We have set up this wonderful structure whereby Ofcom will tell us 
uh, whether Wikipedia is in scope of the bill, almost without appeal, again, without any real democratic scrutiny. Oh, yes, we might have um, a select committee which might write a very good report, highly regarded, which might be debated sometime within the ensuing 12 months on the floor of your Lordship's house. But we will have no say in that matter. We have given it away. So I said at an earlier stage in the bill that this represents, in terms of privacy and censorship, this represents the closest thing to a move back to the Lord Chamberlain and Lady Chatterley's lover that you could imagine, but applied to the internet. That is bad. But what is almost worse is this bizarre governance structure where decisions of crucial political sensitivity are being outsourced to a, an unaccountable regulator. I, I'm very sad to say I do think, my lords, that at first contact rea with reality, a large part of this is going to collapse, and with it, a lot of good will be lost. 